We'll start our tour with a view of New Mills from Edgar Road. We don't know the date of this picture, but it is probably from the early 20th century. In the foreground is a railway between New Mills Central and Strines, and on the left we can see the gas works. If you walk around there now, you can sometimes still smell gas. The ground seems to be impregnated with it. In the centre is Grove Mill, originally a paper mill, with a row of workers' cottages just beyond. And to the right of the picture is a twin arch bridge which carries the Peak Forest Canal over Potter Hay Clough. We can clearly see Brunswick Mill, now Swizzle Sweet Factory. Look closely and you'll see a long, low building just in front. This was a rope walk, one of two in Newtown. There was a great demand for rope to serve the numerous, numerous mines in the district. Just to the left of Brunswick is Walkmore Mill, and in the distance we can see the buildings following the line of Buxton Road. the cinema on Union Road. Still in business in this picture. It later became a bingo hall, but was eventually demolished. In the distance is the police station on Hursley Road, originally a doctor's surgery. Facing the foot of Union Road was the fairground until just a few years ago, there were still a couple of rides parked on the land. Now it's been developed for housing, a row of eight rather plain homes. Head up Albion Road and on the left was the North Western Pub, named after the original railway company, whose Newtown station was nearby. Newtown once had a number of pubs, but all have now closed. The nearest is the Rock Tavern, hidden away on Worksmore Road. The North Western was a guardside house at the time of this picture, with beer from Ashton Underline. Also over the railway bridge, and on the right was Newtown Post Office, another facility that has been lost for some years. At one time the post office was located in a nearby bungalow, The lost pub is the Squirrel on Buxton Road at Newtown. In this picture, it carries the name of the Walker and Homfrey Brewery of Salford. This became part of Wilson's Brewery in 1949, so this is quite an old photograph. The Squirrel's pub sign is seen in this 1982 picture. Not far away, on the other side of Buxton Road, was the Grove, a very small pub at the end of a row of cottages. The single-storey white building alongside was the toilet block. The pub was demolished to make way for a road leading to Goit View, a modern housing development. is only a short distance down to the canal, where this structure on the bank was an engine house for a small coal mine. There were a number of pits at Bank End, but we know very little about this one. It had probably closed sometime in the 19th century, and was perhaps just a very small mine around this one shaft. The structure was taken down probably about 30 years ago. Photo shows a pair of narrowboats at exactly the same location. They're heading towards Furnace Vale, and you can just about make out the horse that is hauling them on the towing path. The boats appear to be carrying coal, which is probably bound for the lime kilns at Bogsworth. The photo is undated, but it is probably very early in the 20th century. The towing path is looking fairly overgrown in this 97 photograph of Canal Row. 
This was taken before construction of the marina on the opposite bank. These homes for workers from the nearby print works were built in about 1796 and are among the oldest in the village. Over 60 years before, and here we can see the canal wharf. At the side of the moored narrowboat are two or three tipplers. These would have been used to load the boats with coal brought down from Furnace Club for colliery on the tramway. You can just see the curve of the tracks in front of the heap of limestone. The stone shed spanning the canal had been used in the 19th century by Mr Fox. He was a boat builder who had relocated his business from Bridgemont and used this as his paint shop. This has now become a dry dock and is spanned by a modern shed, which is once again used for boat painting. Looking in the other direction, we see the old stone bridge, which was replaced in 1924. The house alongside had been the Traveller's Core, or Jolly Sailor. Unusually, the pub seemed to have had two names, both of which appeared in the same time. This was a beer house with no license to sell wines or spirits, and it closed in 1908. A few years before, the government had passed the Licensing Act, designed to reduce the number of, number of pubs and beer houses, and gave compensation to the licensees. Renewal of the license was refused following a police claim that it was a disorderly house. This was a commonly used ploy to close down a pub. Notice that the building behind is of two or three storeys and much larger than the White Cottage Holiday Home now on the site. There had once been an engineering works in this area and maybe it occupied this building. Staying on the canal, we have now reached Bridgemont. This photo was taken in 1971 and shows the swing bridge. This carried the driveway to Botham's Hall. At one time this had been replaced by a lifting bridge. The footbridge still exists but access to Botham's is now by a road from the new roundabout. Towards Bugsworth Basin we can see the cottages on the left, known as Teapot Row, and to the right, Britannia Mill. This was destroyed in a fire in August 2005. The building is now derelict, and there are plans to redevelop the site with housing. The canal was out of use at the time of this photo, and navigation was blocked by the boards which can be seen across the canal. Leaving Bogsworth by Dolly Lane, the road climbs uphill and at the top is an attractive group of cottages, once Ancoats Farm. The name does not appear to have any connection with Ancoats in Manchester, but possibly originates with the Old English Anna Cots, meaning lonely cottages. This photo is from 1915. Looking back into towards the Spain, 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 we'll cross the canal by bands. This, this was a swing bridge, bridge giving access this to the fields This was a swing bridge giving access to the fields of the bridge. The bridge was gone, but a foot of the bridge was gone, gone, but a foot of the bridge was gone, leading, leading us to a muddy track under the road and railway. This is the old tunnel between Furnace Vale Quarry and the canal. There were at one time wharves on the canal bank, where stone could be loaded into the narrowboats. Riddick's builders were responsible for much local construction work in the 60s and 70s. This was their yard on Charlesworth Road. After the co-op closed, they moved their offices into that building and redeveloped the site with new housing. Eventually, this office was to become the Imperial Palace Restaurant. <laughs> 